Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South African Green Hydrogen Project Developers are eligible to apply for 270 million euros in grant finance being provided by Germany to close any bankability gaps in the way for financial close. Terence Screamer joins me to discuss the scheme. Hi Terence. Hi uh, Why is Germany prepared to offer the non-refundable grant funding under its Power to X Development Fund? Yes, you know, Germany is looking at green hydrogen as a core part of its decarbonisation strategy. We know they've got a, a big push on renewable electricity and uh, where they can directly electrify using renewable electricity, they will do that. So we'll see a massive EV rollout and many of the all the cars that are going to be sold uh, in Europe over the next few years are, are generally going to be electric vehicles and that will just uh, continue. As, uh, as, as we ramp up towards a more electrified mobility. But there are these hard to abate sectors and um, one of these are the more sort of long haul transportation. So is trucking the be is elect electric trucks, are they the best for long haul or would it be fuel cell electric uh, using uh, a, a green hydrogen in, in the fuel? Uh, or there's a number of other sectors, particularly green steel, um, sectors that need um, like uh, shipping that need uh, a different time of fuel source other than say there's a lot of transition to LNG at the moment but looking beyond that to what sort of source uh, uh, of fuel that that could use uh, chemicals uh, that use hydrogen in the currently grey or brown hydrogen in their production can they use a different form of uh, feedstock could green hydrogen be used, for instance, in fertilizers in the future, uh, so through a green ammonia process? So there's a number of these hard to abate sectors that Germany is looking to develop. These are all nascent, and green hydrogen is, is a fairly expensive feedstock uh, relative to the other hydrogen sources at the moment, and also relative to how these traditional production processes have worked, for instance, in steel using coking coal. So there's some way to go to bring uh, this technology into a competitive position, even in these hard to abate sectors. And therefore Germany has got this uh, a big green hydrogen strategy. And part of that strategy is a recognition that given the constraints around the renewables resource and the land resources in a place like Germany, they are going to also rely on imports. And they're wanting to develop these imports uh, from markets that have got a competitive advantage in renewables, for instance South Africa with sun and wind, and then on top of that you need the land to develop this. So uh, on those sort of th that sort of triumvirate, so South Africa is one of the partners they're looking at um, to work with uh, to, to begin importing competitively priced green hydrogen or derivatives. Which countries are eligible for the funding on offer and what types of projects will be developed? Yeah, the, the countries, there's seven in total for this this uh, platform, this Power to X uh, development fund platform. There's uh, South Africa being one of the seven. It's also, there's uh, Kenya's in the mix, Morocco's in the mix, and then uh, there's also India and uh, Brazil and Georgia that are, that are looking in, uh, to, to access this non-refundable grant finance. So there's a, a number of countries and it's obviously a limited envelope and they're looking for advanced or fairly mature green hydrogen based, really looking at probably selling derivatives into the German market um, and also to supply those derivatives into domestic markets. So it doesn't all have to be exported into Germany. So we, I know, that, you know, most of the projects around this region and in South Africa are sort of green ammonia, which is an easier way to transport using green hydrogen, which is basically produced uh, using renewable electricity uh, and using an electrolyzer to split water into its component of hydrogen and oxygen, and then using that hydrogen to produce something like green ammonia or potentially a, a green hot briquetted iron, is something that, for instance, uh, we're looking at in Saldana Bay. So there are these derivatives that will be easier to transport um, into into Europe or other markets, but in this case Germany, and uh, so th so those are the sort of projects, uh, the sort of more advanced, not 
not early stage projects, projects that have gone through the development phase that are about a sort of 100 million euro plus in size, industrial scale projects. And uh, they would be looking to just close certain gaps that will take these projects over the line to bankability. So to get it to financial close. And they're looking at a sort of a cap of about 30 million euro cap for the non-refundable grant of finance. And uh, non-refundable grants for a project developer like Manna from Heaven, uh, as, as, a, as, the, as the word says, it's non-refundable, you're getting this grant, but you have to uh, meet the eligibility criteria. And these are going to be quite strict because this is German taxpayer money that's coming to these projects. And uh, really there's, there's the environmental component. Is this really going to be a green product? And then the other one is uh, the Germans place a lot of emphasis on the social development dimensions around skills, around jobs, around whether there's a community upliftment uh, aspect to this. So being green and being socially compliant are going to be the two big levers or ways in to accessing this uh, grant financing. How does this potentially fit in with South Africa's own green hydrogen strategy? I think it, it, it's a good piece in the puzzle. You know, we, we only just uh, announced our green hydrogen strategy towards the end of last year, and people are still coming to terms with what that means. But one of the pillars of that strategy is an export component. And I didn't mention earlier, one of those exports could be sustainable aviation fuel. Uh, as a way of using green hydrogen at the moment, already in uh, Secunda, Sassel produces a, a, a jet fuel, kerosene, using grey hydrogen for, uh, developed from uh, coal. Uh, obviously, a very carbon intensive process, but there are plans, for instance, to start migrating using still the Fisher Trops system downstream, but upstream of that, instead of producing the hydrogen from coal producing the hydrogen through an electrolyzer uh, using ele renewable electricity. And we know Sasselberg's already starting to produce its own green hydrogen through an electrolyzer there. So South Africa's green hydrogen strategy is built on one of these pillars of looking at products that the world needs and that we can export. So we've got a number of those pillars, and I mentioned one earlier being brick, uh, hot briquetted iron that's based on green hydrogen and potentially unmothballing the Saldana steel plant uh, using green hydrogen to do that rather than coal. So uh, those are those two, those two projects. And what's interesting about uh, those projects and the other ones that are fairly advanced and their number that are mentioned in South African context is that they generally gear towards the export market and they generally do will require some sort of assistance to get over the line. Uh, we know the German government's already for catalytic projects. These are the much more sort of nascent projects. They've already given 23 million euro to the RDC in the form of a grant to help develop those sort of more immature projects. But on the mature level, there are a number uh, that are looking at tapping uh, these sort of finance instruments that are either coming from Germany or for, from Japan or elsewhere. And uh, we know that there's the H2 Global platform that offers almost subsidized long-term purchase agreements, sort of security of demand at a subsidized level, which can s help unlock these South African projects. So which of our projects will actually bid for this platform? It's unknown at this stage. There's an expression of interest first round. The bids have to be in on the 1st of March, and then there'll be an evaluation phase to see if it ticks those environmental and social boxes that I mentioned earlier and all the other uh, eligibility criteria that have been set for this program. But I think there's potential for some of the South African projects to bid. And the nice thing about this PTX Development Fund is that you, you aren't excluded from accessing other development, other concessional finance or grant finance that's become available. So it's, it's not exclusive. You can say, look, I've got my bank finance, I've got my commercial funding, I've got this concessional funding, maybe under the JET IP, uh, which the German government's also a partner to. Um, and those projects we're hoping to start e evolving soon. Most of those are going to be on the electricity side, we think, and hopefully a lot towards transmission, which is a major gap. But there's potential here to crowd in quite a lot of these, to just get these projects that are quite, not quite commercially ready 
over the line uh, with using these non-refundable grants, using concessional finance, and using this sort of long-term demand, subsidised demand support that has also come available. So I think it does fit quite neatly with our green hydrogen strategy, definitely fits with the ju Just Energy Transition Investment Plan. And I think it, it's going to be very interesting because these other countries have also got projects and are also looking very much at being part of this value chain, into particularly into Europe. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see whether any South African project can can be part of this first round or probably maybe the other two rounds that are subsequently planned at this stage. But I think it's an interesting development and it dovetails quite neatly and it's a very, it could be a very big help to getting some of these more mature South African projects that just need a little bit of assistance, you know, over the line. Thank you. That's the second Take Show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis. Also, don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News Daily email newsletter.